The UN General Assembly is in session, and some leaders from the Global South are using the occasion to renew their demand for reparations. Among them is Guyana President Irfan Ali, who before taking the stage in New York, spoke to Richard Maidley. Why should somebody who maybe had an ancestor seven or eight generations ago, long before they were a twinkle in their great-great-great-great-grandparents' eye, why should they have to pay now for what an ancient ancestor did or why should they apologize for what an ancestor did centuries ago? Why do they still carry that burden? Oh, it's not a burden at all. You are one of the beneficiary of that uh, slave trade. So this is not a burden. You should uh, be concerned and you should uh, pay because you today are still benefiting from the greatest indignity to a human being and that is a slave trade. And not only did you benefit during the slave trade and your country developed, but look at what it caused the developing world. During slavery, resources was used to build your country, build up your capacity. You were able to then become competitive. You were able to invest in mechanization and developing countries like ours were left behind. So you should be very concerned because you are a prime beneficiary of the uh, exploits of slavery. I think that was very well put. You know, the idea why this isn't just about our ancestors is essentially because in the West or countries which participated in the slave trade, we are still benefiting to some degree um, from the slave trade because that's one of the reasons why Western countries ended up getting rich. And it's also one of the reasons um, why some countries in the global South remain rather poor, right? So it's, it's not just an issue from the past. It's also an issue in the present, which is why um, the demand for reparations is you know, fairly strong. I think there's a, there's a very strong moral case for it, politically rather difficult to make happen, but there's undeniably an incredibly strong moral case for it. Um, there was a moment, though, in this interview that really got Richard Maley riled up. And that was the idea, not that we transfer money um, to countries in the global south, but that Britain's royal family might be involved in any reparations deal. One of the points you're going to be making today is about our royal family. And you feel that um, it's not just about uh, the, the finances involved here in terms of reparations for slavery. It's about the gestures. And you think that the British royal family should make a big gesture, don't you? What do you mean? Hand over a palace to your country? Well, no, we don't want, to hand, we don't want the British to hand over a palace that we built. You know, if you go into many of the palaces in, in, in Britain, you will see the lovely green heart wood from Guyana. You will see the, the sweat, tears, and blood of, of, of the slaves who were exploited. So what do you and, want? And the revenue that, so, was, that was earned from their exploitation. So we are not asking for a palace. We are asking for justice and a fair form of justice to the ancestors and to the, uh, and to the greatest injustice that has ever done, been done to human beings. We look forward we're to not your... going to. We are not asking for palaces. No. You can enjoy the palace, and when we visit you, we will also enjoy it. Again, another super articulate answer, I think. You know, we don't want your palaces, for one, and we built a shed load of the stuff in your palaces, but we'll come visit your palaces. What, what we want is justice. You know, <laughs> we want um, some of your wealth, which you have because of your exploitation of us, and then we can come and visit your palaces on equal terms. We don't, we don't, we don't want your palaces shipped over to Guyana. Obviously, though, you know, the most notable part of that clip wasn't what the guest said. It was Richard Maley doing this. It was like a head teacher talking to a naughty child. And you have to remember here, this wasn't just, this wasn't, you know, often on, uh, they've done it to me, right? Often as a left winger, you go on these shows and they sort of speak to you like you're an idiot. This was the president, the elected president of a sovereign country. And Richard Madeley is speaking to him like he's a naughty schoolboy, right? It's very, very, I mean, offensive. I mean, that is very, very offensive. You do need to speak with some respect to elected presidents. You can't just sort of bang the table and get super angry and lose your call. Cool. I mean, it was the most outstanding arrogance. You know, it, it, Richard Madeley would not, first of all, he wouldn't even be interviewing, you know, Macron or Biden or, or Trudeau. And if he was interviewing them, he certainly wouldn't speak to him in the way that he spoke to the president of, of Guyana, which shows the kind of the, the condescension and the, the contempt and frankly, the racism with which political leaders from the global south um, are treated. I think that it's very interesting here because reparations is not a culture war issue. Reparations is an issue of economic justice. It's an issue of human beings and resources and wealth were stolen in a way that is inextricably linked 
to the kinds of inequalities that we see today. And there is a moral and economic and political case to be made that that wealth needs to be returned. The value of the wealth that was stolen needs to be returned. Obviously, there's a part of the slave trade that can never be compensated for. Um, and that is the theft of human bodies and the torturing of human bodies that was a, that essentially built this country. Um, but we can, you know, we can talk numbers and numbers have been thrown around. It's obviously in the trillions because not only was huge amounts of money and natural resources stolen then, they continue to be stolen now in the form of illegitimate global debt. So that is actually a very hard economic issue. And yet I think it's very interesting that it's essentially being converted and metabolized as a culture war issue by a jumped up celebrity talk show host who has no business being involved in what should be the hard hitting political journalism of interviewing an elected president from Guyana, a country that, again, whose human beings and natural resources fuel the development of this country about what we do with the ongoing injustice. Um, but I think the reason that a Richard Maidley gets so offended, you know, personally offended by this to the point where he's banging on the table, not like a school teacher, but actually like a school child, um, is because it goes to the very heart of the myth that Britain tells about itself, that, you know, in fact, most countries of the West tell about themselves, which is that they, through, you know, entrepreneurial, you know, um, resourcefulness and through pure intelligence, stole a march on the rest of the world. What they don't want to believe is that the development of this country and the ongoing existence of this country as a wealthy and so-called developed nation is inextricably and inseparably linked from the violence and dispossession that this country forced so much of the world's um, population into. And it just, it, they cannot square that with the image that they have of Britain as this country that stands alone, that pulls itself up, up, itself up by its bootstraps, and that just inherently deserves its status. And that's why there is this inherent racism in this entire conversation, because it's ultimately this belief that countries that are predominantly white people um, are full of smarter and better people who naturally deserve the wealth that they have, rather than that was something that they stole from the rest of the world and that the rest of the world is entitled to take that wealth back. Um, so I'm not surprised that he is so emotional. I just don't think that if we had if if produce if our if our broadcast media took seriously the politics of the global south, he wouldn't have been interviewing a president to begin with, because he's not a serious journalist.